is a vibrant fishing village set amid a beautiful coastal reserve southeast of Jakarta. It seems kids of all nationalities like to do the same things at the beach. Hang out, boogie board, water raft, and just have fun. And even when it rains, this young lad just doesn't seem to mind. the afternoon rains have cleared the beach, we enjoy a seaside lunch. Nasi Goreng is one of our favourites. There's nothing like a cold bin tang and swapping stories on a tropical afternoon. Exploring the fare of the local street vendors finds us gobbling mangosteen and rambutan. <laughs> Our journey into the spectacular Green Canyon starts with a boat ride down the beautiful Green Siju Lang River. The river splits two cliffs and leaves us feeling that we've entered into another world. The natural beauty of Indonesia keeps us on the edge of our seats. We get to play King of the Mountain while taking some great shots of the Green Canyon. Its waterfalls are a wonder. Learn that Indonesia's traditional artisans have become few and far between. But this craftsman's dedication and skill is undeniable. He captivates us as we watch him transform a simple block of balsa into a puppet, breathing life into the wood. The intricate detail of his drawing and carving blows us away. And when he was hunting in the jungle, Rahwana was standing in the jungle with his friend Angis Rana. The puppet's costumes and delicate details enchant us, and we can't help playing with all of them. It's neat to watch the man who created these brilliant puppets bring them to life. Some of them are quite villainous, but he finishes the show with a love story about Rama and Sinta, their Romeo and Juliet. It is amazing that all of this beauty and such skilled craftsmanship is tucked away in a very humble home in the middle of a village. Touring the local jungle, we're amazed to find a plant that actually shrivels at our touch. Incredible! And along an abandoned railroad track, we find the village boys beating the heat at their local watering hole. They seem to love to check us out as much as we love watching them. We end our day at a Krupuk factory, and it's a family business. They show us how to make these shrimp crackers, which is a staple in the Indonesian diet, and one of our favourite snacks since we've arrived on Java. 
The sight of croupot crackers drying in the sun is gorgeous, almost like a painting. Songbirds, tuk-tuks, coconut, and lots of friendly faces. With no refrigeration in most of Indonesia, women make a daily trip to the local markets. And we arrive a bit late in the day, as most Indonesians shop very early in the morning. Indonesians love their birds, and the songbirds particularly are prized for the songs they sing. At local competitions, the bird with the sweetest singing voice can win its owner lots and lots of rupiah. We see birds for sale in markets throughout Java. Tropical afternoon rains bring the village to a near standstill. Soon the sun comes out and we are on our way to our next adventure. The train ride to the kingdom of Jogjakarta, or Joja as the Indonesians call it. Okay, intrepid, here we go, all aboard. The heat is overwhelming as the air conditioning has stopped working in our car. One young mother has a big job keeping her little baby content on the trip, so we all take turns keeping the little guy happy. When we arrive in Joja, we find it's a huge backpacking community, and a little club with live music is right next door to our hotel. The great jazz combo and food at Via Via is the perfect way to relax after a day of touring. And we've become used to cooling off with a few Bintang beers. Bintang meaning star in Indonesia. Wow, jazz is alive and well in Indonesia.